Hi everyone. Hey, happy Tuesday. So I wanted to pop in really quickly because I was just in the car with my friend and we were talking about diets and measuring food and portion control and Whole30 and we were having a really great conversation <clears throat> and I thought that it brought up a lot of really good points that I wanted to just pop on and share because I really truly don't believe that to see success that you have to be dieting, that you have to be restrictive. And one of the things we talked about is whatever mentality you take when you're eating your regular diet before you even started dieting is probably the same diet that you're, or the same mentality that you're gonna take when you start dieting and changing your lifestyle. So the reason this is a problem, I'm gonna give you an example. <clears throat> so the reason we have to calorie count and portion control and measure and weigh our foods and think about macros, I'm gonna come back to macros, and if I don't, remind me, drop a comment below, um, is because when you're eating like the standard American diet that's extremely high in sodium, um, it's extremely high in like trans fats and processed foods and all these um, uh, meats that have hormones and antibiotics and just poor, low quality, non-organic, heavily pesticides, sprayed foods, um, you're going to have to calorie count and portion control and weigh and measure everything because that food, first of all, makes you more hungry. So like think about eating an entire bag of chips. It's extremely calorie dense, not nutrient dense, calorie dense. And it also makes you more hungry because it's so fatty and salty and flavorful that we want more of it. So we can eat an entire box of crackers or a sleeve of Oreos without even batting an eyelash, right? And so when that is our diet and we allow these foods into our lives, then basically processed food of any kind, then we have to limit it. We have to restrict it. We have to control what's going into our bodies. But when we are eating real food, and I mean real food, not even like processed paleo foods or processed gluten-free foods, but when we're strictly eating actual real food, you definitely don't have to diet. You don't have to measure your food. You don't have to weigh it. You don't have to think about calories and you certainly don't have to think about macros. And um, that's because you are going to be so full way before you're even able to overeat at all. So you are getting, anytime you eat real actual whole foods like plants and vegetables and beans and fruits and healthy meats that don't have antibiotics and were fed grains and all this sort of stuff, you are going to be so full so fast from that food that you don't even have to think about calorie counting or portion control because you're getting all the vitamins and the nutrients and you're getting all the fiber, which also helps you stay full longer as well. <clears throat> so while there is maybe some tweaking that can be done, especially if you're super focused on a specific physical aesthetic look that you want, um, you know, you can start incorporating exercise and you can start tweaking things a little bit here and there. Generally speaking, for the majority of the population, that's really all that it takes is to actually eat real food. If you eat real food 98% of the time and maybe the other 2% is like uh, processed uh, gluten-free treats or some crackers or whatever it is, but like 98% of the time that you eat is homemade food that is fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, healthy fats, and healthy meats. You don't have to calorie count. You don't have to portion control. You don't have to weigh out your food and you don't have to diet because you're never in this restrictive mentality anymore. <clears throat> So one of the things we were talking about as well was um, like macros, like the whole low carb thing. And so what is hot right now is keto, right? And I think I'm going to do an entirely different video on keto because I have a lot of thoughts about it. But keto is really popular right now. And to oversimplify it, it's extremely low carb, right? But here's the reality of the situation. If you go from a regular American diet where you're eating cereal in the morning or maybe a Pop-Tart or um, some toast or something like that, and then you go to lunch and you have a wrap or a sandwich or a sub, and then you go to dinner and you have some pizza or some pasta or a, or a dinner roll next to your dinner or whatever it is, 
you're going from extremely processed high carbohydrate diet, and if you're switching to a whole foods diet, there is no reason to even think, to even think, to even consider the concept of being low carb. The only reason low carb is an issue is when you're eating processed foods. That's it. That is the only time it is an issue. Same thing really goes for sugar. The only time you're exposed to sugar is if you're eating processed foods. There is no reason to limit your carbohydrate intake ever if you're eating real food. So let me give you an example. You can have like, let's say something healthy is like 90 to 100 grams of carbs for a woman a day. Maybe that might even be on the low end for a lot of women, depending on your activity level. And like I said, the grams isn't really the point, but I want to give you an idea here, okay? A lot of you could have like four times that, five times that, maybe even more eating. I mean, if you go to McDonald's, you might get that in like half your meal, okay? So if you're eating like a processed foods diet or a regular American diet or you eat pasta or you have a sandwich, you're going to get a lot of processed carbs that get broken down into sugar and, you know, just cause a lot of problems. And that's where we have to restrict, we have to count, we have to macro, we have to do all these things. But if you're eating real foods, you can have like three sweet potatoes a day and still not even hit like that 90 to 100 gram of um, carbohydrates. And we think that having a, a sweet potato, that's all carbs, right? But you're getting the fiber, which ma makes it a slow burn carb. You're probably eating it with some vegetables or some grass fed butter, things that make the digestion process that's completely different. Your body takes things when it's hungry. What it's asking for is nutrients, the micronutrients, not the macronutrients, the micronutrients. I mean, that's another conversation because it needs both. But <clears throat> what your body is really hungry for is all these vitamins and minerals and fiber that it's getting from the food. It doesn't really get that from the processed foods. And we want more, and it's and the sugar and the fat and the salt all stimulates our brain to be addicted to it and to want more. It also stimulates belly fat, by the way. But that is why you're eating this food and you want 10 more of it, even though you're technically not hungry, your body's telling you that you're craving it and you really are hungry and you overeat it. And that's where the concept of portion control comes in. And the whole concept of, well, I can have my cake, but I need to make sure it's low carb. So I'm going to increase all these other ingredients to make it high fat or whatever it is for whatever diet. It's ridiculous. Just stop eating processed foods and start eating real foods. When you eat real foods, you don't have to count calories, you don't have to count macros, you don't have to weigh your food, and you don't have to eat low carb because you're naturally eating low carb. In fact, people that eat real whole food, natural food, like 98% of the time, may even struggle to get enough carbohydrates. And so in that world, if you're going to eat real food, my caution to you would be maybe you should count your carbohydrates just to make sure you're hitting a certain level because it can get extremely easy, especially for those who avoid grains, to not get very many carbs at all. And so that's kind of my point. It's actually really hard when you're eating real food to... Um, eat high carb at all. So like the concept of eating low carb and limiting your fruit or limiting your sweet potato intake or any of that is just so completely silly. So I would love to hear what your thoughts on this are. Is that like a complete like mind shift for you? Because I know it totally was for me when I started eating real food and all the dieting lingo and all the you know, all that stuff with calories and stuff kind of started going out the window. I was like, this is so cool. And so one of the things I teach my clients is you can eat what you want when you want, as long as it's made with the right ingredients. And that's when you get those treats that are made with whole food ingredients like paleo brownies or something like that, where the base is a sweet potato, but the sweetener is honey. And then you have like the micronutrients in the honey and all of the added benefits, or you have maybe a fiber rich brownie that's made from chickpeas. That's actually one of my favorite recipes. That's completely different than a completely refined sugar refined flour baked treat. Does that make sense? I hope that this has encouraged you because I thought it was a really good conversation um, that I had with my girlfriend of just the difference between eating processed foods and real foods and the mindset shift can be so different. But we can really get in a habit, right? We can think, well, I had to measure my food before, so I must measure it now. Um, so I wanted to kind of pop on and talk about that to kind of maybe get you out of that habit and just let you try to listen to your body because when you eat real food, 
it balances your hormones and your hunger signals and your full signals and your poo as well because you're getting more fiber. So your body is processing things in a completely different way and it's more honest with you. So it's gonna start telling you when you're actually hungry and actually full and you're gonna be full way before you've overeaten, I promise. If you're eating real food and you're eating a lot of vegetables, you're gonna get full fast. So I hope that was encouraging to you. Hope you guys have an awesome Tuesday. Bye.